So basically we've covered the points that relate to the wali um, and his authority and what to do if the authority is abused. The wali, the wali's authority is to basically guide the lady so that she is not deceived in marriage um, and uh, she's not just driven by her, by her emotions and forgets about other things, okay? But yani, what would be considered as the, a deficiency in the husband or the groom so that the wali, uh, for a good reason, rejects that man and she has to listen? What, what, kind, what kind of reasons would, would you think that if a wali says, no, I'm not going to give you my daughter in marriage and she has to listen, what kind of reasons? Huh? A person. Yeah, if, if he's corrupt, of course. Or if he's not, of course, totally not a Muslim, of course. Uh, what, if yeah, if he cannot support her uh, at all, um, then it's a problem. But um, if she is willing to be patient with him, such as this man who had nothing really to give to the woman in dowry, but he, he wanted to give his izar, remember? The lower garment. He was very poor, extremely poor, but still he, he uh, Prophet ﷺ allowed him to, to, to marry her. And frequent, and did more than one incident where the Prophet ﷺ married uh, a rich woman to somebody who was poor, um, Zayd. Ibn, Zayd ibn, ibn Haritha, Zayd ibn Usama, uh, from Maqada Zayd ibn Minha, Zayd ibn Haritha. Zayd, when he wanted, Zayd was actually initially a slave and he was freed. But Zainab bin Tajahsh was a lady from a high ranking family in Quraysh. And uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded her through the Prophet وسلم, to accept the marriage of. Of Zayd, فَلَمَّا قَدَى زَيْدٌ مِنْهَا وَطَرًا زَوَّجِنَاكَهَا And he was the Prophet ﷺ's son by, by adoption, by adoption. So there are incidents where, يعني, if it's a lower family class, that's not a good reason. If he's poor, but يعني, she's willing to be patient with him and they struggle together, that's not a reason to reject the husband. If he is married, would that be a reason for him to be rejected? No. Not... <laughs> A reason to be rejected uh, because that was their normal that uh, most of the Sahaba had multiple wives except of course if she is very young Yani and uh, has never been married before and like he is married what okay uh, so Yani there is a good example where uh, a wali can uh, refuse a groom, although he is righteous, his morals are good. Uh, when Fatima, radiallahu anha, the daughter of Prophet sallallahu who came to propose to her, and that's quite amazing because it was Abu Bakr Siddiq, and, uh, and then after him came Umar ibn Khattab, and they are much older than her, much older, okay? Uh, even Abu Bakr Siddiq is probably older than the Prophet sallallahu himself. So, and he proposed to her, but Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, she is too young. So that was a legitimate kind of refusal and she had to listen uh, because the age difference was, was extremely big, okay? Uh, although in their culture it was, it was okay, but he, he as a father, he felt it wasn't okay uh, for his daughter to marry somebody with such a big age difference. It could have been like 50, 40 or 50 years difference, okay? That's huge. Uh, and then Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu an, anhu, he came and proposed and he accepted him. Because the age, there's an age difference still, but not, not as big, not as big. So this is called al-kafa'a, means, يعني, uh, how can we translate kafa'a? Uh, they, they are suitable for each other. So, he, uh, so if he refuses because he's totally unsuitable for her, although he's a righteous person, Still, she she would have to she would have to listen. So yes, I mean, if somebody is married, he comes to somebody who has never been married before. She's eighteen or nineteen, and he's like forty five or older, and he is married or as well. And the father says no, 
if it's legitimate cause of refusal. And it's quite similar to Prophet Sallallahu refusal of Abu Bakr Siddiq, the best of this ummah, after the Prophet Sallallahu And then Umar Khattab, the second best of this ummah, he refused them both. And he accepted Ali ibn Abi Talib. So that was a, a good example of that. And then, so basically, uh, we're almost done with the matters related to Wali. And this next hadith also relates to Wali and Hassan ibn Samura. But this is a rare incident. It may not happen uh, except very infrequently, very rare. عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال أيما امرأة زوجها زوجها وليان فهي للأول منهما رواه أحمد الأربعة وحسن الترمذي. The meaning of this hadith in English um, if uh, it is narrated by Samura I don't I think it's Samura ibn Jundub Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said if two guardians have given a woman in marriage she marries the man she was first married to. She marries the man she was first married to. Which means that يعني, it's very difficult to happen, but if a woman has two brothers, okay, and uh, one living in a different country, and and uh, and both of them يعني, at the same time or different times, يعني, between them maybe it's like a day or two, and they knew that she was okay to marry somebody and she give them permission to maybe uh, select a husband for her that could happen and they and they did so uh, he did the marriage contract each one did the marriage contract with a groom not knowing that the other one is doing with the other groom then who is the one uh, who is the real husband here the first one, the f- first one in timing because why is the second one not her husband she's already married <laughs> Because she's already married. <laughs> no. She can tell, I'm already married. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, it is extremely difficult to happen, but let's say yani, they didn't know and they went ahead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, in the past maybe it could happen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, the, but the marriage is like Nikah, right? In, yes. So that's yeah, it probably cannot because the girl would have to, you know, like say in front of somebody that, yeah, I accept somebody as my But she can also, yeah, and trust her brother. Yeah. And this brother was talking to her about a certain guy. This oh. brother was talking about another guy. And she was okay with either one. And, you know, they sat together and he insisted, don't give me your sister in marriage. She's already accepted me. And the other guy said the same thing at the same time. It can happen, but extremely rare. When the words come out of their mouth, yeah. then the nikah has happened. <laughs> the words come out of their mouth and the witnesses are there, it's done. When Jabir radiallahu anhu said to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, a year of 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 a year Basically the matters of wali are completely done here. When Abi Huray radiallahu anhu said to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, لا يجمع بين المرأة وعمتها ولا بين المرأة وخالتها متفق عليه. That's important. Uh, this hadith is narrated by Abu Huraira. Prophet Sallallahu said, a man must not join together in marriage to him a woman and her parental aunt or a woman and her, and her maternal aunt agreed upon. Okay, this hadith is authentic. So there are certain people you cannot have in, uh, in marriage at the same time. Like a woman and her aunt and a woman and her paternal or maternal. And who else? A woman sister. And, sister. and her sister. And a woman and... See, that, that this is the jama. Paternal, paternal aunt and maternal aunt. Yes, you can't have them. Yeah. Yeah. If, if they, they were breastfed by the same, the same nurse. Maybe her daughter. If yeah, but see, uh, if a man marries, that's a good question. If a man marries a daughter, وَحَلَائِلُ أَبْنَائِكُمُ اللَّاتِي uh, sorry, um, uh, no, combining is only these three. Combining is the sister and the aunt, yeah, uh, the, the sister and the aunt, whether paternal or maternal. But also if she was an aunt or, uh, or um, if she was an aunt from uh, uh, breastfeeding as well, this applies to okay? Or a sister from breastfeeding, it applies, it applies too. Uh, of course, if a, ma- a man marries a, a, a woman, her mother becomes completely forever forbidden to him, even if he divorces, 
even if he divorces the daughter. But the adopted sister, adopted sister is okay, right? Like not the, the yeah, adopted has basically is not his relative. Yeah, okay. relative. Yeah. Um, so and also the, the, <laughs> to his sisters is mentioned in the Quran. You cannot combine two sisters. Uh, also, uh, man marries a woman, her mother, of course, and grandmother, whether from a blood lineage or from uh, breastfeeding, they all become forbidden forever. Now, the moment he concludes the marriage contract, they become forbidden. Now, uh, but if he marries a woman and then she has a daughter, he, he did he did the marriage contract, but he did not consummate the marriage. Okay, there's no cohabitation yet. So basically there's no sexual contact yet. He decides to divorce the mother and marry the daughter. Is it allowed or no? It's allowed, it's allowed. It becomes she becomes permanently prohibited for him to marry. Once this marriage is consummated, then uh, this girl becomes totally and forever forbidden, forbidden for him in the, marriage. What? Is the mother of the girl that the second girl that he married? No, the daughter of that woman he married. Yeah, that's what. It's because he married the daughter, so the mother is forbidden. Right away. No, the mother is forbidden the moment he finishes the marriage contract. So either, either yeah, or. The is, mother. No, no, not either, either or. or. There's a difference. No? So if he marries the mother, the daughter is forbidden, right? No. The daughter is forbidden only after consummation of marriage. Yeah, only after, okay. Yeah. But the mother is forbidden the moment he completes the marriage contract. Even even if he they decide to divorce before consummation of marriage. You follow? Okay. So is it, is it safe to say the general ruling is that whatever you cannot marry uh, in terms of your relative, once you marry someone, you cannot marry the same in-laws, like, you know, as you would apply to your wife. That's very difficult for me to understand. <laughs> that's, that's difficult. I don't know. Did you guys understand? Well, he used to say that all the in-laws of your all spouse. The, all the in-laws. Like, you know, your like your in -law, sister-in-law, mother-in-law, daughter-in-law, all those things. You cannot marry them. The, the, cannot marry no. Them. Yeah, you can marry the sister-in-law if you divorce the sister. Yeah. So, so there's, there's tahreem ila abad. There's hmm. permanent permanent prohibition such as the mother and, uh, and the daughter mm -hmm. yeah. and so there's yeah. tahreem they call ila amad yeah. until 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 a certain point in time so, so. Yeah, he means which is combining yeah. for if a man is a, a, a woman she has a sister while he's married to this woman this sister is forbidden okay, okay. Yeah, but if he divorces he the divorce sister his, he can he marry can, the, then if, if, one, the, if the woman dies she, he can marry the sister marry the sister but not the mother but not the, not the mother because that's permanent. Not that's the mother permanent. or the daughter. Not the mother or the daughter with the difference between the mother and the daughter like we mentioned. Yeah. But the sister or the aunt, those once if he divorces his wife or she dies, he can marry. But and those people who are temporarily prohibited, they are not, you're not like a mahram to them. Because that's a big mistake. Some people think he married this woman, her sister is forbidden, then she can dress whatever she wants in front of him. Yeah. That happens, and some people they think, oh, he can't marry her. He can't marry her temporarily. Maybe he sees her, divorces this one, and marries him. <laughs> <laughs> so she, she, he's still not a mahram to her. He's not a mahram. He's not like her brother, because her brother is permanently prohibited to, to marry her. Correct? The daughter is also not a permanent. Like once he divorces the wife, he can no, marry. Her. No, 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 not no, marry the daughter of the same. Also, you cannot marry, of course, uh, the one, the, the woman that your son has married, okay, ever, ever again. So if your son divorces or la qadallah dies, you cannot marry her. It becomes permanent. You become a mahram for her permanently as well. Is her daughter permanent? Hmm? Is daughter permanent? Like if the... If she the your daughter-in-law becomes permanent. Okay. Like, like your daughter, right away. And also, uh, if a man marries a woman, his son... Let's say he, the man dies or he divorces that woman, his son can never marry her. She becomes his mother. What do you call it? Mother? Uh, Step, step, step mother. mother. Stepmother. She becomes like his mother forever. 
all of them are become prohibited the moment you conclude the marriage contract except one who is that you, there has to be consummation of marriage in what situation if you marry the woman who has a daughter that daughter only becomes permanently haram the moment the marriage is consummated between you and her mother you follow the other ones are permanently prohibited for you to marry the moment you conclude that marriage contract okay uh, also let's say somebody that's a, that's an important point divorced the sister like his wife and she has a sister and his wife now is in her idda three months or three periods he cannot marry her sister during that time that's very important that marriage becomes invalid right away because this woman until her idda is complete he can still return her he can still he can still have her back you follow so she is still considered like his wife until the three periods have passed okay and that and there's another thing that actually there was a big case in egypt that happened and i didn't know about this ruling until that case happened so now it's very difficult to imagine this one a man who's very rich in egypt has many stores well known so he was married to to four women so what happened is he uh, i think he got into a fight with one of them so he divorced her and because he was angry with her immediately like within a month or so he married another fourth wife in her place okay was he allowed to do that was he allowed to do that no but the period of his is not exactly this is like so in islamic law this he's considered as marrying five five wives he was actually jailed for jailed for 10 years let's say you have said that yes the law for three times right? yes so once you say it for three times yeah then can we still you know like yeah th- no exactly good question yeah. if if it's talaq rajai if it's the kind of talaq that you can bring her back <laughs> definitely you cannot definitely if somebody has four wives and wants to marry again during that three periods menstrual periods he cannot definitely there's ijma consensus on this if it's a kind of talaq that is permanent like the one you you yeah, said that's fair. That's fair. there's a difference in opinion oh, okay. there's a difference in opinion between ulama so better also to be avoided because it's a big matter right yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, you're going into a marriage what wait for three months what's wrong with you <laughs> <laughs> i'll stop you inshallah <laughs>